Today, we're using macadamia nut blossom honey to make a traditional and a separate mead recipe. Let's get started. All right, so you guys have seen my videos enough. I'm just gonna get right into this. This is macadamia nut blossom honey that I bought. You can find the link down below to purchase some for yourself. Here's what it tastes like. It's got a lot. It reminds me a little of avocado blossom honey in that it has natural roastiness. It also has um, some good nuttiness to it, which is kind of interesting. It's not like, I mean, like a peanut or a real macadamia nut. I'm excited to use this. So we are going to use two different recipes today. We're making a pear in macadamia nut blossom honey mead recipe. We're making a traditional. I love to keep traditionals around just to know what the base honey tastes like. And then of course I love to mix it up. So here are the two recipes. We've got the pear version right here. We are using this Vintner's Best. Um, and I understand some of you are gonna get mad. I don't care. Um, we're using this to get our pear flavoring because I don't wanna go buy a bunch of pears and this stuff works well. So this is gonna be a roughly, I think it's about 25 ounces or 26 ounces of this flavoring. Water up to a gallon. After we include, um, I'm gonna use two and a half pounds of macadamia nut blossom honey. Um, actually, I'll probably use two for this one. This has sugar in it. We're gonna use two and a half pounds for the traditional. And we are using the Premier Classic, or Classic, I don't know how you say it, yeast. One quick note, I'm using this yeast because of its tannin preservation, the low ABV nature of it being 13%, and it is good for flavor, complexity, just development in that regard, I think it'll work well for this recipe. I'm gonna go ahead and mix both of these things together. You might have seen this stuff before. Here's all the stuff you need to make a mead. Mix your ingredients, throw in your yeast, add your, your nutrients, do all the things. I'm not gonna go further with this. I have tons of videos if you wanna know exactly how all this goes. Here we go. All right, so these yeast are ready to go into each one. I'm just gonna dump them in. They've been rehydrated with GoFirm. So there's this one. Those yeast are gonna get going, get excited. I'm actually gonna rinse this out. This over here. One second. All right, so I've mixed everything up. Took some gravity readings. Starting gravity for the pear and macadamia nut version is 1.120. It's pretty high compared to the traditional, which is 1.082. Now, I wish I could tell you I was gonna be a very responsible human being and do a Taz in a 3.0 schedule and all these things. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that, to be honest. I'm gonna forget about these. I got too much going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, two nutrient additions. I'm not even gonna do a full staggered nutrient. I'm just gonna do half of my nutrients in 24 hours. And then in about 72 hours, I'll kick it with the other half. I'm gonna use Fermaid O for this. So, um, you know, I, I factored, in, factored in my nutrients into that recipe. So. We're gonna let these start fermenting. Again, some people are gonna be mad at me for not being a diligent home brewer and not doing Tosno, but I don't really care. I've made great mead based off of my methods. So I'm running with that. We're gonna go ahead and let this start fermenting. Come back after the primary. And we're gonna see how they taste. And now for the tasting. Here we go. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I'm gonna go backwards in time a little bit. So. Obviously the bottles are finished now. So there's a lot that happened and uh, we're gonna talk about it. So I, I started in, started each one, went through the primary and I'll show some footage of course. Started gravities, um, the pear and the honey version stopped really early. It stopped at about 1.038, 1.039 and pretty much halted, which at first I was like perturbed by but then I realized I don't have to back sweeten, so it's nice. It sat there for a long time at that uh, gravity, it, it was done. So I racked it off of that one, of course. Then the traditional actually went totally dry. So uh, we went to 1.000. 
I racked off of that, of course, moving with an auto siphon and tubing. At that point, I was um, going to let them sit for a little bit. And then I decided, okay, great. Now I want to back sweeten. So here's where I messed up. And I'll just, you know, be totally honest. In order to back sweeten safely, you need to stabilize, whether that be pasteurizing or using potassium metabisulfite, something like that. I didn't use that in the traditional, and I thought I did. I ended up back sweetening with eight ounces of honey, only for this one, the traditional, to re-ferment. And it, so it went from 1.000 up to about 1.018 gravity. And then the yeast started to party again because they weren't stabilized and uh, fermented out or fermented through almost all of that gravity. Our final gravity for this one is 1.004. So here are the gravity readings for both. This is the final gravity. Now, there's also some extra stuff I wanted to do because I wanted to develop not only sweetness, sweetness was already apparent in both of these now, I wanted to get the tannic value to be upped. And so I oaked them. I threw some oak chips in to each one and I believe I used mocha oak chips. And I thought that was gonna be interesting. I oaked each one with, it was roughly about a half of an ounce, half an ounce of uh, mocha oak chips for um, seven days. And put that oak in and then seven days later, I felt like it was a good level because I tasted it and we racked off of those. Then I noticed it was not very clear, so I decided I'm gonna try and clear it up some. So I used, so I used dual fine, which is a combination of kisasol and chitosan, which are used in winemaking a lot to help clear it up. I didn't get any video of me adding these in, but here's the end result after adding the kisasol and chitosan um, about three days later, looking pretty clear. So in total. This recipe has yielded roughly about uh, the traditional, I got one wine bottle and about six uh, beer bottle-ish sizes. I do have a 375 milliliter back here. And then these are all beer bottles. And then the uh, pear and macadamia uh, version, because I didn't have to rack it as many times, I didn't lose as much. So I got a uh, wine bottle and let's see, six beer bottles and then one, I believe this is a 375, it might even be a 500 milliliter, I can't recall. So I got a little more of the pear macadamia. Let's go ahead and move these out of the way so we can get a tasting. All right, I've gone ahead and poured them. As you can see, we have on my left the traditional and on my right is the pear and honey version. Um, this is again, macadamia nut blossom honey, which is a pretty interesting and I would say rare kind of honey to get. Of course you can get clover and wildflower all day. Something new for, to get here. Um, they look very, very good. I will say that prior to using the dual fine and clearing it, they looked good, they tasted good, but of course having a good clear mead it just takes it to the next level. So um, uh, the traditional is not the most clear. It's still got a little haze to it, but that's okay. I'm not, I'm not completely concerned with, with that. So what do these taste like? I'm going to start with the traditional. So we have a base for what it's like. Here's the traditional. Mm, yeah, the, the honey plus that oaking has really given a, a nice, a full body tannin and uh we're not insanely old i mean we're only i guess we're decently old we got about three months on this three and a half months since we started it yeah the body is just so nice the honey is um you know when you think macadamia nut you're like man this thing's gonna taste like i mean I, I, super nutty <laughs> and it it doesn't really it's got roastiness to it but this does have a fair, obviously, honey, uh, has floral uh, retention, floral value, and uh, it's very bright to medium bright um, floral notes. This also, to me, has a little bit of, excuse me, a fruitiness, almost like an apricot, like a 
not bright, super bright fruit, but like a, I mean, peri, in that same realm that this is, has like a malachy acid fruit profile. I think this is fantastic. And that, again, that oaking takes it to the next level. Does it taste like oak? Maybe the smallest amount, but a lot of people will assume, okay, when you use oak, you're trying to add oak flavor all the time. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes you wanna add oak and just get more tannic value. This has a lot of tannic value because of the oak and a little bit of oak flavor. The traditional, super good. I mean, I have a great basis for what this traditional should taste like, or the honey as a traditional should taste like. Flip on to the other side, we now have the pear version. So let's try this one. It's definitely got more sweetness to it, but the acidity balance between that pear itself and, um, I mean, really, I, I don't add any more acid balance. That, that pear acidity matched up with the honey sweetness, matched up with the tannic oaky value that we get is really nice. It, it is very rounded. This also does not have a lot of alcohol burn, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, because if you think about it, um, it could be a little bit dangerous for you. I mean, that is smooth. It's not juicy. It's pretty thick, I would say. A lot of that is attesting to the the sweetness level, of course. Definitely obviously get pear in here. That pear does provide a little bit of that juicy flavor to it. It's pretty sweet. I mean, 1038 is sweet. So if I submitted this to competition, it would definitely go in the sweet category, if not more. So it's, it's great. I What I love about these videos and I love about doing this with honey is that I know, I'm gonna set this some bottles back of this, this traditional. I know exactly what the traditional um, at its base value should be like. Meaning that when I decide, oh, I wanna pair some flavors with this honey, all I gotta do, harken back to this and go, what, what can go well with this? So that's why I do a, a combination. Now I'll tell you this, previously I had never done pear and macadamia nut blossom. So it was an experiment, but it worked out really well and the pairing went really well. So I'm a huge fan of this, and I think you should definitely get a hold of some macadamia nut blossom honey if you can. Of course, it's a little bit rare, and you know you kind of have to know where to look. I will link down where I got mine if you'd like to order, and um, go make this mead or make a mead with this honey. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I am doing this with every new honey varietal. I'm making a traditional and a pairing of a different fruit. Um, so expect more of that in the future. If you would like to subscribe, support the channel, hit the button and that will help out um, as we are growing. Our goal is, I don't know when this is going out in the future, but we're shooting for 50K subscribers this year. So wherever we're at at this point, I don't know that we're gonna be at 50K by the time this video is out. So. Uh, Feel free to hit subscribe if you would like to support. We're just, we're solely doing that to, as a goal. And um, somebody, uh, I, I put something out on my social media about pushing to 50K and somebody kind of lambasted me and said, you know, why, why the push for subscribers? You know, is there a, a monetary goal or, you know, do you get a, a bonus or some other whatever at that point? And the truth is no, I just spend, on top of my, my day job, my regular job, 30 to 40 hours a week doing mead related video editing, shooting content. So I think it's good and fair to have a goal. So if you would like to support the channel, hit that uh, subscribe button and do all those things. And I hope to see you in a future video. Cheers.